Hey guys, with such a wide diversity of Amaryllis varieties, there's truly something for everyone. Now I purchased 13 different varieties of Amaryllis bulbs this year, plus with the couple of varieties that I had from last year, it's turning into quite the display. Now some of these have already started to bloom. However, that being said, there are still quite a lot more that are not quite there yet, which is pretty exciting. Now, once your amaryllis bulbs have begun to flower, there are more than a couple of things that you can do to keep the bulbs as well as the blooms as vibrant and as happy as can be. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing what you can do to keep your amaryllis at their best. Now, there are also some really important crucial care tips in terms of lighting and watering and the like while your amaryllis is growing and flowering and i'm going to be sharing those tips as well All right, so like I said, this video is going to focus on care for growing the bulb and when it's in flower. However, if you are interested in details and specifics on after bloom care or the details surrounding dormancy, which is also after uh, your amaryllis has flowered, then um, it's best or better for you to check out uh, my after bloom amaryllis care video. I'm going to be throwing up a link uh, on the screen and in the description of this video. So please don't hesitate to check that out if that's what you are after. And in that after bloom video that I'm mentioning, I really break down uh, the steps and the timing surrounding dormancy and your aftercare. So it really kind of demystifies the whole process and uh, yeah, check that out. All right, so let's start with pruning and deadheading your amaryllis. Now, when it comes to amaryllis, each individual flower stalk uh, that it puts out, and it will put out a few um, consecutively. All right, so to explain exactly what I mean, here is a close-up of Exotic Star. So this is one of the varieties of Amaryllis that I have. And as you can see, there are two flowers that are currently in bloom on this particular stalk. But if you take a closer look here, you can see that there's actually a flower um, on this stalk that has not yet bloomed. So uh, if I turn this around all the way, you can see that uh, this emerald bulb about a week ago already put up its first stalk with flowers. Those have all come and faded. And what I mean by pruning is once those flowers have faded, um, you're gonna want to use a pair of shears and I'll show you exactly uh, on another uh, variety that I have after this, but you basically just wanna leave a couple of inches at the base and chop the whole stalk off. And this will really help the ball put the energy into new and upcoming um, stalks and buds and flowers. Like you can see this one here is coming in and there actually is a fourth one uh, below. But there's also, I also mentioned deadheading and I wanna explain exactly what I mean by that, which is uh, not the stalk, but actually related to uh, the individual flowers. So because these all haven't come in and bloomed at the same time, that means that these two are going to fade before this one opens up. And to give this one a fighting chance and for it to look its best, it's a great idea once these start to fade to basically cut them off at the base and uh, that is really encompassing of the uh, pruning and the deadheading that I mentioned and I'm actually going to show you exactly how to do that right now. So it's a good idea to use a clean, nice, sharp pair of shears. Now here is um, a stalk that I've completely removed. I would have left a couple of inches uh, like I mentioned previously. And here are a couple of examples of just individual flowers um, that I have removed, but not the entire stalk. That means that there were still a couple of flowers on that stalk that were still in bloom and looking nice and fresh. All right, so this is Sweet Star and it has these gorgeous pink blooms. Now, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this, but I've actually removed uh, two uh, I've deadheaded two of the flowers here. Now, all three of these look still okay, but for the sake of this video, I think this guy right here is probably, you know, 
a day from now would be a good idea to remove him because he's just starting to fade. So uh, for this video, I'm just gonna show you exactly how to do that. So you can see the flowers here and there's uh, about an inch or two of this stalk and you're just gonna want to take your pair of clean sharp shears and cut it right at the base right there. And uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. All right, now if I haven't exactly mentioned the reason why it's a good idea to do this, it's because by uh, deadheading the flowers that are spent or that are about to go and cutting back the entire stalk, uh, when all the flowers have been uh, you know, faded or gone, it really allows the uh, plant and the amaryllis bulb to put its energy into the new growth and the new blooms so that you get the best looking uh, flowers to come um, after some of them have faded. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler, and if you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or better yet, you can subscribe to my channel. Now to really show me some love click on the bell for alerts and notifications for future content okay so the next tip I'm gonna share with you guys is actually pretty simple but it's really important and worth mentioning so when your amaryllis bulb is growing and it's putting out its stock its first whatever second stock whatever the case may be left to its own devices <laughs> it's not a good idea because basically what will happen is the stalk will start to grow and it will start to direct itself at, uh, towards the light and you could get a really kind of bent looking amaryllis. So the solution to this is quite simple. Um, if you don't want your amaryllis looking like the leaning tower of Pisa, the solution is simple. You can rotate the container or the pot that the amaryllis bulb sits in every day or every couple of days, and this will kind of mitigate and fight so that your amaryllis stalk will grow up in more of a uh, vertical fashion and you don't get something twisted like that. Now, my dear friend who will remain anonymous, um, you know, wasn't sort of rotating the pot and I'm gonna throw up a couple of pictures of what happened to their amaryllis. And I think this is kind of case in point that although this sounds super simple, if you don't do it, you can end up with, so as you can see, turning your pot a few degrees every now and again can really make all the difference. Okay, so with those tips and tricks covered, I do get quite a lot of questions uh, in regards to sort of general care tips when the amaryllis is, from the time that you pot it up um, until it is growing and flowering. So because the amaryllis do have very different stages of life, like I mentioned dormancy and all of that, they do require different types of care uh, in the different stages. And I really wanna zoom in on how to care for these uh, from the time that you pop them up in terms of watering, lighting, and soil mix all the way until uh, they are in bloom. So in terms of watering your amaryllis, um, what you're going to want to do is once you've potted them up, you're going to want to give them a really good healthy watering and then you're going to not want to water them until the bulb starts to put out some fresh, bright green new growth. Once you see that growth coming through and the stalk to, be, uh, you know, the stalk's beginning to be pushed out of the bulb, that's a really good time to give it a light watering and you're gonna wanna water it there and after uh, once the top inch or two of the soil has dried out. Now, uh, once the amaryllis has completely uh, finished flowering, so you've deadheaded, you've you know pruned your stalks back, at that point, you're gonna wanna stop watering your amaryllis altogether. So that's the beginning of the aftercare, and you're gonna to wanna to not water it for at least a couple of weeks. Now, when it comes to lighting and the lighting needs of the amaryllis, from the moment that you've potted it up until it's in bloom, you are gonna to wanna to provide your amaryllis with either some bright, full morning sun, um, or really, really bright, nice bright indirect light um, afternoon full sun is not really uh, recommended um, so 
that is ultimately what the best lighting situation is. Now, if you do have any questions surrounding what type of soil mix you should be using, uh, really the ideal soil mix for emeralds bulbs is something that's really loamy, and usually that involves like some silt, some clay, sandy kind of soil mix. This means uh, you could really use some sort of really good indoor potting soil mix, but you're probably gonna wanna add an ingredient or two that's gonna help with drainage um, because you don't want really water sitting in this. So using a pot with drainage is also important as well. Well, that's it for me. Stay tuned for some more amazing, beautiful emerald blooms. Miss you guys already. Until the next one. Oh yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, or better yet, hit that subscribe button.